workplace accidents are something that nobody likes to think about. But thinking about the things that might happen and how to avoid them is actually the best way to make sure that you and your workmates all go home to your families at the end of every workday. In my view, the best PPE there is, is to have a crystal clear understanding of the consequences of a serious accident. The absolute best way to get that understanding is to be there and witness it firsthand. That's a lesson you'll never forget. The second best way is to have someone else describe that scene who was there at the time, particularly someone you know and trust like a family member or a workmate. With that in mind, I'm developing a new series of videos where I'll interview people who've had first-hand experience of serious workplace accidents, and we'll go through what happened and how they might have done things differently or decisions they might have made that would have averted the problem. To kick it off, I'll share an experience that I had and how we might have done it differently. Some years ago, I was running my own small exploration company in Laos, and I had a small team of people out collecting soil samples on a prospect I was investigating. They were staying in a small regional town at a guest house and driving out to the prospect each day to collect the samples. We were using an old Toyota Hilux for the job. It had done a lot of miles, but it was well maintained and all of its safety equipment was functioning. One night, they decided that they would go out to eat some noodles at the local noodle shop for dinner, and they jumped in the truck and drove down to the main street. The town only had one main street. It was the only bitumen road in the town, and it was there. The noodle shop was about here. And a small dirt side street, the guest house was here. That distance is about half a kilometre. As they drove down here and turned the corner, there was a group of cows sleeping on the road here. So they had to negotiate their way slowly through those cows. And as they got to there, they saw a light coming towards them from this direction. That light was a motorcycle and it was weaving rather erratically along the road, probably because of the potholes and for other reasons that'll become obvious in a minute. And they flashed their lights, which is a normal warning sign in Laos. That had no effect, and the motorcycle continued onwards and collided with the front of the car. The Hilux was stationary at the time, and there was nothing they could do to avoid that accident. The motorcycle collided with the front left corner of the Hilux. The rider, who wasn't wearing a helmet, went over the bull bar, and his head left a plate-sized dent in the bonnet. All of the people on the soil sampling team had completed first aid training and they provided what assistance they could. But it soon became clear he was going to need more help than they could give. Now they're in a small regional town in Laos, it's three hours drive to the nearest hospital in the capital and there's no ambulance service. So in true practical Laos style, they flagged down a passing motorcycle loaded the unfortunate patient on the middle between the rider and a passenger at the back and rode him down to the clinic, which was a few hundred metres down the road. At the clinic, the nurse identified him as a policeman. It was National Police Day and there'd been a big party down at the police station all afternoon and he was on his way home. It later transpired that he'd borrowed the bike from another policeman. It was unregistered and uninsured. The nurse looked at him and decided that he was too drunk to examine because they couldn't get a proper response out of him, so they'd leave him in the clinic overnight and examine him the next morning. Unfortunately, about midnight, the geotechnicians got a call to say that he was bleeding from one of his ears and his nose and one of his eyes was badly distended. It was clear he had a serious brain injury and he needed help. Again, in practical Lao style, the geotechs knew that they were on a town on the Mekong River and just across the river was another town in Thailand that did have a hospital. So at midnight, they found a guy with a powered canoe, loaded the guy onto the canoe and took him across the river to Thailand. At the hospital, the doctor on duty took one look at him and decided he needed cranial surgery 
and the nearest place to do that was another 100 kilometres further south at a major hospital in Thailand. So at 3 a.m. in the morning, the geotechs found a van, hired it and drove the guy to the hospital. The doctor had phoned ahead and there was a surgeon waiting at the hospital and he performed a cranial surgery that removed a large blood clot and probably saved that guy's life. Unfortunately, it was also the lead up to Songkran, which is the Thai National New Year's Day, and it's notoriously bad for road accidents, and the surgeon knew that he'd have a rush of business coming up. And he was also dealing with what was effectively a illegal immigrant from Laos who probably wasn't going to pay. My geotechnicians gave him all the cash that they could and they kept him there for three days, just long enough to sew him up and make sure that he was upright. And then they sent him back to Laos. Unfortunately, the damage had already been done and it's likely he'll be an invalid for the rest of his life. The net wind up from that was a very long and complex series of negotiations with the local police to recover the vehicle and unwind the obligations with the family. Insurance simply doesn't cover that kind of issue in Laos. So what could we have done differently to have avoided that accident? The vehicle was well maintained, all its safety systems were functioning, the crew was wearing the appropriate PPE, and in fact the vehicle was stationary at the time of the accident. So no amount of driver training or skill would have allowed them to avoid the oncoming motorcycle. The one thing they could have done was decided a few minutes earlier to walk to the noodle shop. It's just an order of magnitude more dangerous driving at night, particularly in regional areas where geology tends to get done. You're much more likely to encounter animals on the road and other hazards like broken down vehicles, fallen trees, etc., are much more difficult to see and avoid. On top of that, other drivers on the road at that time of night are much more likely to be affected by alcohol. That combination of risks sooner or later is going to catch up with you and end badly for everyone. My bottom line takeaway from all of this is that you should just do everything possible to avoid driving at night. Go to the noodle shop before it gets dark. Walk to the noodle shop if it is dark. Whatever you have to do to just avoid that danger period. If we'd made that decision a few minutes earlier, then that man might still be a walking, talking member of society and a breadwinner for his family.